Hello and welcome to this video discussing Federalist Paper number 10. Uh, now Federalist 10 was one of the essays written by James Madison in order to argue in favor of the ratification of the Constitution of 1787. In Federalist 10, he's arguing that the large national federal republic that would be established under the Constitution will protect the people's rights better than the loosely governed collection of mostly independent states that existed under the Articles of Confederation. His argument largely centers around the concern that small groups called factions would take control of the government and use the government's power for the group's advantage rather than for the good of the nation. Now this is a problem that's faced by any government that's supposed to be controlled by the people. People start to organize around their own goals and they try to capture the power of the government in order to achieve those goals. And some factions may be willing to violate the rights of the people or the principles of the nation in order to get what they want. So imagine all the farmers of the country work together to get the government to ensure artificially high prices for crops, or all of the Harry Potter fans in the country work together to get the government to remove all non-Potter books from the libraries. Now, this might be good for farmers or for Potter fans, but these measures would interfere with the economy and culture of the country, and they would not protect the rights of everyone in the country. So this shows that factions can pose a threat to the freedom of the people. So what did Madison think we could do about the problem? Now he builds his argument by presenting two options and then evaluating each one. And to the question of what we should do about factions, here are the two options. We can either stop people from forming groups based on what they believe, or we can stop those groups from doing too much damage to the country. Now, Madison eliminates the first option because there are two ways to stop factions from forming and both of them are terrible. First, you could take away the people's freedoms to form groups so that they don't have the chance to work together to pursue their goals. But if the reason that you want to uh, stop factions is that factions endanger the people's freedom, then taking away the people's freedom in order to stop the factions is kind of counterproductive. So that option is out. The second way to stop factions from forming is to make sure that everyone agrees on every issue, so there's never any division or any conflict in society that has to be resolved by the government. Now, Madison says that this solution is just downright impossible, because as long as people are different, they will want different things. And as long as they want different things, they're going to try to get those different things. And so you're going to get factions to try and get control of the government. So if we're not going to be able to stop the factions from forming, we're going to have to go with option number two and control their effects. We have to make sure that a faction does not get control of the entire government and use the government's power at the expense of the people and the people's rights. So Madison turns to this solution and tries to figure out how to make it work. Now, he thinks that the solution is going to depend on the size of the faction that's posing the threat. If the faction is a minority of the population, then the electoral system should be able to deal with that. Just outvote the faction so that the faction loses, the faction never gets the power to do its dastardly deeds. But if the faction is a majority of the population, we have a problem. The faction should be able to win most, if not all, of the elections and take control of the government's power. And this is Madison's great fear that a majority could use the power of numbers to trample on the rights of a minority group. This tyranny of the majority is the greatest danger to a democratic or republican form of government. Now, we should note here that Madison was a slaveholder from Virginia, but slavery apparently wasn't the example of tyranny of the majority that he had in mind. Um, so, controlling the power of a majority faction is the reason that Madison is writing the essay in the first place. He says that the proposed constitution of 1787 will create a large federal, federal republic which will do a better job of controlling the dangers of factions than the individual state governments operating under the Articles of Confederation. Why? You have to consider that Madison prefers a republican form of government to a direct democratic form. Now these terms don't reflect the current political parties that use those adjectives as names. They're general terms for ways that the people can have a say over the government. In direct democracy, the people have direct control over the laws and government. That opens up the possibility of tyranny of the majority. In a republic, the people don't decide about every law. They select leaders who then make the day-to-day -day decisions. And Madison prefers republics because he thinks that in most situations, the people will choose leaders who are more qualified than the average citizen, smarter, more virtuous, with better judgment. 
These leaders will have their own interests, sure, but they'll be better equipped to look at the big picture and do what's best for the country, not themselves. But for this to work, the people need to be able to choose good representatives. The better the representatives, the better you'll control the problem of factions. So Madison figures that if we can choose leaders from the population of the entire country, we'll have a bigger candidate pool. And when you have more people applying for the job, Madison figures you'll wind up hiring a better person for the job. Now, the power of numbers can also improve the quality of representatives by affecting the voter base. If you increase the number of voters in an election, you increase the number of votes that a candidate needs in order to win. And Madison thinks that a bad candidate might be able to fool a small group of voters in a statewide election, but that same bad candidate would have a lot more trouble fooling a large number of voters all over the country. So at the same time that the large republic is improving the quality of representatives, it's also weakening the power of factions. Because Madison believed that people in different areas of the country would have different interests and therefore they would form different factions. So even if a bad idea becomes popular in Pennsylvania, it would have difficulty catching on in Massachusetts and Virginia as well. So even if the representatives from Pennsylvania support this bad idea, the representatives from Massachusetts and Virginia can outvote them and defeat the bad idea. So while critics of the Constitution worried that the large republic would be too diverse to be truly united and therefore too hard to govern, Madison claimed that the size and disagreement were advantages. They would ensure that every faction would have to compete with every other faction and none of them would be strong enough to dominate and take over the government. Thus, the union would preserve the people's rights better than the state governments would be able to. And therefore, ratifying the, the Constitution of 1787 would help create a more stable form of government that protected the people's rights. Now, Federalist Number 10 is very influential in terms of the way that we think about political parties and interest groups and other ways that people organize in order to uh, pool the power uh, of their ability to uh, affect the government. And uh, so it's, it's up to you to take a look at the last 200 something years of history uh, and evaluate Madison's arguments onto whether the Constitution uh, adequately safeguards uh, the United States from the problem of faction. Um, so as you think about that and evaluate Madison's argument, I'll thank you for watching and see you next video.